Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be flipping these matching nightstands that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for $50. Finding matching nightstands are not the easiest thing to do on Facebook Marketplace because they are so desired and so when I ran across these, I was so excited that I had my boyfriend actually pick them up right after work because they were in the same city that he was. Honestly, I knew something like this would go quick for only $50. I have a really special plan for these. Actually, I'm gonna be doing something that I've never done before but is super popular on the internet right now. I'm not gonna tell you just quite yet so you'll have to stay tuned for that. Some things that I really, really do like about these pieces are these weaving designs on the front drawer and the sides. I think I like the hardware, but I just won't know until the very end. These pieces actually are from Broyhill, so we know that they are good quality sound pieces. I also really do like the feet on these, which usually when there's a flat edge like this, I'll actually put a modern base on it, but I think I'm gonna keep the feet this time around. Now, before we get too far into the video, if you guys could please like this video and subscribe down below if you aren't already. It really does help small channels like mine grow. We just hit six thousand subscribers which is insane I think I'm gonna be shooting for a 10,000 subscriber goal by the end of the year so if you want to help me reach that goal make sure to subscribe down below otherwise let's start how we usually start these makeovers off by taking off the hardware yes you guys I thought there was a piece missing off of these nightstands so I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to reuse this hardware, but if now that I found it, if I want to, I easily can. So that's a super big plus. Who knows? I might actually use the original hardware, which I don't do very often, but we'll see at the end. Mm, not if I break them though. I'm also just going to take the drawers out because it'll be easier when it comes time to clean and sand and everything. So I'm going to do that now. Of course these, oh, there's wax on these. Of course these are hard to get off too. Okay, just a little bit of muscle. Yep, there we go. So here's actually all of that wax that I was talking about. They will put wax on the sliders here to help prevent the drawers from sticking and so that they fly really great. So it's actually a good thing it's there. It's just I hate when I go to pull a drawer out and it gets all over my fingers. All right, so now that all the hardware is taken off, the next thing that I'm actually gonna do is get these pieces out here so that I can sand them down. We just wanna make sure that they have a good scuff sand. I just really wanna make sure that the paint is going to adhere to the surface for a long, long time, and this is one of the ways to do that. Make sure any time that you are sanding to protect yourself. I have a respirator that I'm gonna use, and I have some goggles as well. I'm not quite sure if I know where they are, but if you've got some on hand and you're doing any sanding project, I highly recommend that you wear them.
There's not a lot of room right here right now, so I'm just gonna do one at a time. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. So real quick, I just wanted to show you the difference between not sanding it and sanding it. Obviously a lot of this is dust, but it's also a lot less shiny than this one is. And that specifically is going to be what helps to keep the new finish stay on. Take my I've got to apologize, some of these clips are a little bit blurry as you guys can see. I think I had my camera set in like manual focus instead of autofocus. It's still a new camera and I'm just getting used to it, but I promise not all the clips are like this. Okay, now that this piece has been completely prepped, let's go ahead and talk about design. All right, so as I'm sure you already know from the title of this video, we are going to be doing something a little bit different, which is a faux wood look design. I've seen some people do this on Instagram. I haven't seen a YouTube video of this done yet though, so I'm really excited to not only do this, but see how it turns out. To do this, I'm gonna be using Rust-Oleum's decorative glaze in the color Java Brown. This, along with this Valspar paint, is going to be what makes that faux wood look design, because it's gonna have some depth and some texture, which I will get into how we're gonna make that texture in just a little bit when when the time comes you guys will see to make it look right you kind of need like a creamy color underneath as like a base coat so i'm going to be using my favorite Valspar paint called oat brand from lowe's if you've watched any of my videos before you would actually know that i use this paint quite a bit i just used it on a project and i used it a lot in the past on other projects as well I absolutely love this paint. I think it's a beautiful color and it's gonna go really well with the design that we're going for today. If you did watch my latest video on me using this specific paint, I actually didn't use any primer and that piece held up really well. I stand by the fact that I don't think this paint actually needs primer, but I am going to prime these specific nightstands and let me tell you why. Unlike the dresser that I did in the last video, these nightstands have some places where the finish is kind of breaking down and when that happens on wood pieces, you can run into bleed through. That is something that I don't wanna run into and a way to prevent that is by priming the pieces. So although the paint does hold up on its own, without primer, it doesn't prevent bleed through and that is something that primer will prevent. So we're gonna go ahead and take that precaution anyways. So I feel like I haven't used primer in forever and honestly it's definitely been a few months because I've really been testing what paints need primers and what don't because primer can be a little expensive. So if I don't have to use it, I don't want to. Obviously use it when you do have to. Don't cut corners, especially if you are selling these pieces for profit and they're going to buyers because if you do sell a crappy piece, they're not gonna come back for another one when they need one and they're not gonna recommend it to people. So don't go corners, always use primer when you need to. I'm gonna be using this Zinzer 123 primer. It's a great adhesion primer. It's not the best primer for bleed through and stain blocking, but it does have a little bit of that in there and 
These pieces aren't cherry wood or anything. Sorry guys, there might be a slight change in camera quality. I'm using my iPhone because my battery died again. I definitely have to get more batteries for this camera. That's one thing that I'm quickly learning. But as I was saying, these nightstands aren't like a mahogany or a cherry, so I don't think that the bleed through will be really bad. And because I have this primer, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. This will block out some of that bleed through, and since I don't think it's gonna be too bad, if any, this primer should be fine. I really like this primer because you get the best bang for your buck. I think it's only like 23 something dollars for this whole gallon. I will leave a link to it in my description box down below along with any and all other products that I use in this video in case you do want to check it out for yourself. Amazon sometimes has cheaper prices, so I do like to get my products from there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this primer mixed up so that we can start getting it on these nightstands because I am so excited to try out this glaze. I'm also really nervous because I really want it to turn out good. That is so satisfying. might want to take the feet off of these I don't know it might be a little bit too late for this one um, well at least right now because the primer is wet but I think it'll be so much easier to paint them if I get these feet off I might be risking it. I might have to fix up the primer, but I'm gonna try to get the legs off of this one too, even though the primer's wet. So. <laughs> that I think I'm gonna use because I think that'll help lift these pieces off the ground. So I'm gonna go find those real quick. Ta-da! I used to use these a lot on like every single project and honestly I don't know why I stopped using them because they're so helpful and my dad would definitely appreciate it because it'll keep a lot more paint off of the garage floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on.
right, so they're stable. The painting triangles are on the bottoms now. The feet are off, which will make it a lot easier to prime and paint now that they're off. And so we can continue finish up priming these pieces. After the primer dried about an hour later, I was able to start painting. Now some people ask me why I always hand paint over doing like a paint sprayer. And really, I just love the look of hand painted pieces. That, and I don't really have a really good sprayer to use. One day I would like to really get into the spraying. I'm just not quite there yet, especially since I am sharing a garage and I'd rather do it in my own space. I feel like I'd feel a lot more comfortable then. There's full coverage on these nightstands. It took three coats to reach that. It's finally time that we get into the design and start working on the technique to reach that faux wood look design. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be using this Rust-Oleum decorative glaze. This is gonna be what creates that depth and ultimately make it look like it's faux wood. Along with this, there's one special thing that we're actually going to need to achieve this. Of all things, that is one of these broom bristle head things. This is gonna be what creates the texture and depth as we swipe it across the surface with this glaze. So this is something that I've never done before and for that reason, I wanted to try it out off camera just so that I can make sure that I actually knew what I was doing before I tried to teach you guys. I thought starting on one of the singular feet would be a good idea and I am in love how it turned out. I'm gonna go grab it so that I can show you guys. Okay, so here it is. It's still drying a bit and I might end up doing a second layer. I'm not quite sure yet, but it definitely does look like what I'm going for. So hopefully we can pull this off on both of the nightstands and the drawers and the rest of the feet and I think it's gonna turn out really good. So I wanna explain this here first and then I'll show you guys how I'm actually doing this. But I just put some extra glaze in this paint roller container and I actually have this little sponge brush that I'm using to kind of dab it on and then after that I use this to spread it all out. I'm so nervous to actually put these on the actual nightstands but that's the point that we're at so I think let's go ahead and try this out. I will say, I think it would be a little bit easier if I had a smaller, um, like a smaller broom head. It's kind of a lot having this big thing, but 
It's looking really good. I'm gonna show you guys close up and then we're gonna continue going. So now that I've done the process of this faux wood look technique, I have a few things that I want to go over. Just a few tips I think would be helpful if you were gonna try out this technique or if I were going to do this again, which I probably will eventually because I really love how these look so far. The very first thing that I would do is get a smaller sweep head thing than I had. Mine was pretty big and I didn't have as much control as I would like. And I think if I got a smaller head, I definitely would have more control and I think I'd be able to make the lines a little more precise and in the end just have a better look. The second thing that I would do that I was figuring out throughout the process was going in one direction. Just pick what direction you want to go in and stick with it throughout the entire piece, make it match. I did notice that as I was doing some of the sides, I was going the opposite way of what I had gone on the tops. And I don't think it's a make it or break it type of thing, but it'll definitely look a lot better if you do it in one direction all throughout. The third thing that I would recommend is depending on how dark you want your piece, I wanted mine lighter. I like the lighter wood colors. Make sure that you're offloading the bristles just so that it's not super dark, I think. Actually, one of my nightstands is a little bit darker than the other just because there was a, that learning process and I didn't offload all those brushes. I might be the only one that can see that because I created it, but I think they are just a little bit slightly one's darker and one's lighter. I can go back and fix that though, so I'm not too worried about that. Just Make sure if you do want a lighter look that you're definitely offloading the um, bristles because it can catch a lot and it can make it really, really dark. And then the last thing that I would just say is take your time. This process took a lot longer than I thought it would just because you have to go back and forth so many times. Honestly, my back is hurting. It took quite a few hours to do this. I think it's definitely worth it though. These look amazing. Okay, well, I think I'm all done. Got the bodies, the dresser, or the drawer fronts, and the legs, or the feet now. My hands are a mess. I probably should have worn gloves. So let me get my hands washed up. I can't really think of anything else that I would say to make this project go smoother. I am gonna go ahead and top coat these off camera. I feel like I've just done a lot of painting in this video and you guys get the idea. I am gonna go ahead and grab my top coat though so you can see what top coat I'm gonna be using. So I'm just gonna use this Minwax Poly Acrylic. It's actually the top coat that I use on most projects when I am using a top coat. This is flat. I don't really want a shiny surface. I just want it to be very matte and smooth, kind of like how it is now, but I want that extra layer of protection. So I'm gonna use this. I also just put the original hardware up against the finish now, and I think it looks absolutely incredible. And I think actually spray painting it gold or doing something else might throw it off. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna go ahead and get these finishing touches done and get the hardware on. And I can't wait for you guys to see the final reveal of this piece. One last time, I'm gonna ask you guys to give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, turn on your post notifications, share this video, Video and subscribe if you aren't already. Now let's go ahead and get into this final review. Feels so true, feels so true. You tell me crazy like no.